Heaven's California Yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video and it is Sunday today which means it is Subscriber Sunday. Now, last weekend we did say it would be a Q&A but unfortunately I didn't get any questions. So I'll probably leave a Q&A for next month. You know, I think it's maybe that I ask for questions maybe too often over on the Saraha and people just don't want to ask questions. And if you don't want to see a Q&A then that's totally fine. And that's fine and dandy. But today we're going to be doing a little bit of a quiz stroke test. Now, as a lot of people may or may not know, I am quite a lonely person. I don't have many friends in life. Now, okay, no, stop, stop arring, okay, no, stop. I said stop, stop arring. Um, I, I don't, I don't mind, okay? I'd rather have a small group of people that I know I can trust and that I can rely on rather than a whole group of friends that I kind of get mucked up with and you know do so do bad things with and do things that normal teenagers do okay I'm not you would I would not class myself in the social trend okay I don't go out drinking and I don't go out getting drunk I don't go out coming back at six o'clock in the morning and I don't go out on the lash I don't go out smoking I don't smoke I don't drink I don't, I don't know, go to car meets, I don't do any of the, the normal teen adolescent stuff, okay? I wouldn't say I fit into the social trend, which is probably why a lot of people would probably look at me and go, you know what, you can kind of keep yourself to yourself, we don't really want to socialise with you, and that's totally fine, okay? I have people that I talk to, and I have people that, you know, I can trust, and I have people that appreciate me for who I am, and not what I do, which is kind of what... You know, there's always someone out there that you will you will meet, whether it be a friend, a girlfriend, whatever, a male, female, whatever, male, male, female, 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 male, male, female relationship, a friendship, or a best friend, or a girlfriend, or a wife, or a, a, a fiancé. There'll always be someone out there that when you hear a message from them, or you hear a, or you see them, you feel content, you feel happy, and when you find that person, I can guarantee your life will get that little bit better. But today, we're going to be doing something that, I don't know, I guess is a little strange um, for some people. I guess it's maybe a little boring to watch, but I thought I would do it. We're going to be doing a friendship test. I'm going to be testing to see if I'm a good friend, okay? Maybe the reason why I've never kept friends is because maybe I'm not a very good friend myself. So we're going to jump over to the trusty internet and we're going to have a look to see, probably will be a BuzzFeed quiz, but we're going to do a few quizzes and we're going to see what the results are. Let's get straight okay, into it. Okay so I'm not too sure how this is going to work because I'm not obviously not using the webcam. I'm going to be using my actual camera for a change to try and use that as a webcam and try and sync them up the best I can. So I apologise if they're a second or so out of sync, but it should work. So we're going to type in uh, friendship test, I guess. Uh, what's this say? Uh, the ultimate... Actually, no, let's do... Am I a good friend? Quiz. Am I a good friend? Quiz. Oh! That's a good flirt. We don't want a good flirt. I mean, that's a that's a whole other video right there. Uh, am I a good... There is a lot of quizzes we can do here. Uh, test. Are you a good friend? Psychology. Let's do this one. And then we'll do probably the one on BuzzFeed. Because who doesn't like BuzzFeed? Okay then, let's go down, 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 go down. Okay, uh, let's see then. Let's get rid of all this rubbish. Okay, you organise a party and invite all of your friends. What do you, what do you do to bring them all together? Make a little speech outlining the things they've got in common and affection you have for them all. Introduce them to people who you think they might get on. Uh, make sure they bring their partners or listen out for any misunderstandings and try to all the wheels of the conversation. I think I'd introduce people to who 
I think might get on. We'll do that one. I think that will help the the friends kind of get on and try and at least have some civil tea. Um, you learn that a trusted colleague who is going for the same promotion as you has been criticising your work. What do you do? Although you're of course you don't want to get drawn into petty politics, put more time into your friendships with the team and friendly colleagues. Invite her for lunch to talk about it, or go for a direct confrontation, uh, confrontation, preferably in public. Definitely no to that one. Probably not for lunch. I mean, it's only a colleague. Put more time into your friendships with your team and friendly colleagues, although you're across, you don't want to get drawn into pay politics. I probably would just, you know, if they've been chatting shit, then, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, your oldest friend complains that she doesn't get invited to parties. Why is it a she? I mean, I guess I have a female friend, so I can kind of relate. Uh, you, either, spend more time with her yourself, hoping you can keep her cheerful. That's kind of good. Suggest she invite people over that she likes the best, a decent one. Invite everyone you know to an impromptu party, or advise her not to show that it bothers her. I mean, all of them are pretty good options. I think the first one, spend more time with her yourself. It doesn't really resolve the problem that she doesn't get invited to parties. Suggest she invite, suggest she invite over the people she likes best. Doesn't really invite her to a party. I think I would probably go for this one in the situation. Then she does get invited to a party. Maybe that'll make her feel a little bit better. So we'll do that one. Um, you hire a holiday cottage with some friends and it seems to become apparent that you aren't compatible. You take it upon yourself to maintain a good atmosphere. You're ready to make sacrifices. Try to adapt after all. Changing your routine and doing things another way can be enriching. Make the others feel guilty until they adopt your way of doing things. Nuh uh. Draw a list up of holiday rules on the first evening and hand it out on day two. No, 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 no. Um, I would take it upon myself to, you know, it's my holiday too. I'd say, guys, you know what? We might not see eye to eye on everything, but at least try and put our differences aside, okay? Bite your tongue. If you want to take a step outside, go and take a step outside, go for a walk. Let the, you know, let it get off your chest if you have anything to say. You know, when people don't get on, sometimes the best thing to do is get them both a chair, sit them in the middle of the room, and just say, talk it out. If it gets physical, then, you know what, step in. But, sometimes, if you have a problem with someone, it is best to just kind of tell them what your problem is, and make sure they're aware, I guess. Um... Question number five, with technology such as email, text and instant messaging, communication has become more intimate, you can say more, more easily, kind of I guess, more intense, you're always working on current friendships and making new ones, I mean I've made some new friends in the past couple of months, more efficient, you can say what you want to say straight away without wasting time, or playful, you can surprise people, cheer people up, hide, or be visible as you wish. Definitely not more intimate, okay? It's not more intimate than having a normal conversation. Not really more intense. I'd say it makes it less intense because if you're trying to make more friendships, you know, having to go out and meet people, then obviously you're going to have less time. It's kind of more efficient, but, you know, you can still ring them up. I would say playful. You can surprise people. i do that one. Okay, let's see. Next question. You have a risky, you have a tricky relationship with your in-laws, which upsets your partner. What do you do to improve things? Go and see them on your own to talk about it. Prepare a big Sunday lunch to show that family is important to you. Buy them something for a treat or get theatre tickets for a play everyone can enjoy together. Nothing, it's up to them to get to know you better. If the in-laws, if the in-laws don't, there's a reason why the in-laws don't like you, okay? There's something that they think that there's something about you that they don't like, whether it's you're rude or they don't think you're the right person for your girlfriend or boyfriend. You know, that happens a lot, okay, in relationships. You'll have parents that maybe aren't so keen on your partner, but you think they're really good. A lot of people might say, trust your parents, they kind of know what they're doing. Um, you know, not really a situation that I've ever been in. Would I go and see them on my own and talk to them about it? Probably not, because that would make me f probably look a little bit needy. 
I wouldn't buy them something as a treat, although it would be nice, they'd probably suss something's going on. I definitely wouldn't go for nothing. I'd probably, to try and show them how much family means to me and how much their their daughter means to me as a, as a partner, I would probably go and cook something up, rustle something up, invite everyone over, and um, just try and smooth the, you know, wipe the slate, I guess. That's kind of what I'd do. Um, your line manager at work has made some dis bad decisions lately. How do you react? Why is it always a girl? Why is it also why is it always women? I don't know. Uh, you treat her the way you wish to be treated if you were in her position. Give her feedback discreetly. Get your team together and talk about the problem before putting down your response in writing. You talk about your worries with her line manager. Or leave it to her. After all, she hasn't asked for your opinion. I mean, I prob ah! probably talk about it with her line manager if I had a problem I guess that I wasn't really happy with uh, question number eight your best friend is very busy with work and is neglecting you how do you give them a reminder to pay you some ascension bad mistake already if they're busy with work okay if if you have a friend and you know they're a busy working person you know they're working five however many days a week five six maybe even seven days a week a couple of hours a day whether it's Three or four hours a day, five or six hours a day, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hours a day. And you ask them to meet up and they go, actually, you know what, I'm really not feeling up to it, I'm tired. It's not that they don't like you anymore, it's actually that they are tired. They physically, you know, working is physically demanding for a lot of people, you know. Doesn't matter if you have a physical job or not, it's also mentally demanding. So we'll have a look at the options here. Be trying to talk to them about what is on their mind by paying them more attention, by trying to make them jealous, or by issuing an ultimatum. Do I have to pick any? Like, I guess trying to talk about what's on their mind, because all the others are just rubbish, by paying them more attention. I mean, I don't like to come across as needy. By trying to make them jealous, that's a really bad option. And by issuing an ultimatum, that's just freaking rude. That's like saying, you know what, Bish, if you don't talk to me, I'm freaking out of here. That's rude, man. That's rude. Don't do that. Uh, you're going out when a neighbour stops you to chat about her health problems. You're running very late. What do you do? Your neighbour is elderly and alone. The least you can do is listen. Okay. You give her your number so she can phone up if she needs to and encourage your neighbours to do the same. You let her know that you're very busy and cut the conversation short, promising you'll pay her a visit soon. Explain you haven't got time to talk at the moment. If I was running super late... Hmm. Well, if you're running super late, I probably wouldn't do that one, because they can drear on for a long time. Give her your number. I mean, if you have to, if you have your... Do you normally have your neighbour's number anyway? We... I'm pretty sure we do in this house, so... I'd probably guess they already have my phone number. You let her know that you're very busy and cut the conversation short. That's... I mean, at least you're saying you promised her to pay a visit soon. Or... I'd probably do this one, actually. Expect actually, no, we'll do for this one. No, I'd explain that I haven't got time to talk. So I'd say, look, I'm running really late. I'll come and give you a visit while I'm done. Um, a friend seems to be keeping her distance and you don't know why. She doesn't reply to your email, she cuts cone, phone conversation short, and she cancels plans. How do you react? You assume that she's very busy and give her some space. You ask her other friends if you know what has gone wrong. You talk to her about your worries and fears to test whether she emphasises with you. You might get to the root of the problem. You start doing the same so she's forced to explain herself. When If, you, if it's a friend, okay? If it's a friend that you've, you have a relationship with, I would probably assume that she's very busy and you give her some space. You know, if someone's not replying, but they normally do, it's normally that they are busy. Okay, don't jump to conclusions. If it's like a week and you haven't heard, I'd probably drop the message saying, hey, is everything okay? You know, um, but just a day, they could be super, super busy. You know, they could be out, they could be out with their family, out with a boyfriend, out with a girlfriend. You know, they could be pretty busy people. You know, not everyone has enough time sit there talking to friends all day, people do actually have a life, uh, unlike myself. Um, I would definitely either go the first one, or I, I think it would definitely be the first one. That's what I'd go for. Let's finish then. Um, are you the type of, yep, yeah, let's see. 
We get you are empathetic. You make friends by being sensitive to the messages others give out to you so that you can be attuned with their emotions and take into account their point of view. Before you enter into a friendship, you like to ensure the other person is a good listener since this inspires you with confidence. In such an environment of trust, intimate and emotional feelings thrive. Although your compassion and sensitivity are great when things are going well, they don't serve you well when there is conflict. Since you are so emotional, you find it hard to respond to criticism or attacks, especially from those you are close to. You tend to give your time, help and advice by expect- oh! Freaking bugs in my face, holy moly crap balls, that was scary. Um, you tend to give your time, your help or advice without expecting anything in return, which is true, which often means your sacrifices are not appreciated. Uh, you put other people's needs ahead of your own, even if it means you suffer. You ask to... Uh, you ask to... You need to ask why others should take priority over you in your childhood. Did you have to expend a lot of energy to get love back? What criticisms or anger do you have buried for fear of rejection? To get to being the centre of your own world, you could learn how to please yourself by listening, for example... The things you don't want to, but allow yourself to. And how to receive gratefully everything for compliments to present without necessarily being the first person to give something back. I don't really get what they're saying, but um, I kind of get... I am an empathetic person, okay? I am, I am an empathetic person. I will agree with that. But we're going to go back then. Back, 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 back forward. And we're going to do a BuzzFeed quiz. Because what is doing a quiz without a good old BuzzFeed quiz? Let's refresh this page. Not am I a good flirt. That's, as I said, that's another freaking day. That's another freaking day. We're going to do... <sighs> bit of dirt on my glasses there. Uh, yes, I accept the privacy policy. Are you a good friend or a terrible friend? Let's freaking do this. Quick fire round. Have you got with an ex's... Have you ever got with a friend's ex? Nope. Have you ever cancelled a date to cheer up a friend? Never been on a date, so nope. Uh, have you ever told someone one of your friend's juiciest secrets? Hell no. Have you ever taken your friend home because they got too drunk? I haven't, but if I did, then I probably would. Uh, have you ever constructed a text on your friend's behalf? Um... I think so. You know, if someone asked me that. Uh, have you ever picked something out of your friend's teeth? No. Have you ever secretly judged something your friend told you? No. Have you ever covered your friend while they're avoiding someone? Covered for your friend? Yes. Have you ever genuinely hated someone just because your friend did? No. Have you ever said anything about your friend that they wouldn't that you wouldn't say to their face? No. Situational round. Your friend gets a huge promotion at work and wants to go out for a drink, but you already have plans. What do you do? Cancel your plans immediately. You know that she's deserved that promotion. It's always a girl. It's as if they know that I only really have female friends. Uh, try to combine your plans. You leave your original plan early and go meet your friend for a drink. Tell your friend that you have plans and ask whether you can celebrate the weekend instead. Apologise. Uh, I don't really have friends, so I'll tell her, can we maybe go another day? Um... We're going to be for a party together and your friend looks terrible, what do you say? Uh, you don't look 100% your best right now, but you have a good bone structure that is your worst. What? You, do you look gorgeous, you look terrible. You don't look your best right now, but you have such good bone structure that your worst is 100% better than everyone else's best. I wouldn't say I look terrible, I'd probably go with that one. Uh, you hear a rumour that your friend hooked up with someone really gross at a party. What do you do? Join in with the bitching. You can't believe she'd do that. Ask your friend whether the rumour is true before you get involved with the gossip. Defend your, defend your friend's right to hook up with whoever she wants and immediately decide that you hate the person who is spreading the rumour. I mean, I wouldn't hate the person, but it's not very nice, is it? Uh, oh, we're on a bit too, bit too far down. Your friend texts you with emergency in the middle of the day. What do you do? Sneak off to the loo and text her back immediately. Tell her that you're kind of busy right now, but you'll call on her way home, back home from work, or ignore it. I mean, I wouldn't sneak into the toilet and 
message someone that's a little bit creepy. Uh, your friend is going through an emotional family crisis and wants to see you tonight. But you're meant to be going on a third date. What do you do? Cancel your date because your friend needs you. Go on the date but go to your friend's house with ice cream and wine afterwards. Call your friend on the way to the date. Pretend to not to your friend's message. You can always call her tomorrow. Um, date over friend. Date over friend. Probably this one, I guess. Um, your friend introduces her to your new SO, but you don't really like them. What do you do? Bitch behind them. Bitch about them behind your friend's back. And what she doesn't know can't hurt her. Tell your friend that you don't really like them. It's always best to be honest. Give them a chance. If you still don't like them after you've hung out for a few times, you'll give up. Try your absolute hardest to like them. I'd probably say, I'd be honest, I'd say, look, I'm not really the biggest fan. It's your friend's birthday and she's organised a party. When do you show up? You arrive early to help her set up. Bang on time, you're happy to be there for the awkward bit before anyone else shows up. A couple of hours in, but you'll bring a cake. You'll have another party to go to first and show up whenever you're done with that one. Possibly won't go. I'd probably... I mean, depends how close the friend was. If it was a close friend, I might go early. I'd probably arrive early to help her set up. Get out my face, goddamn fly. Get out the window, man, or I'll have to kill you, little friend. Um, your friend is feeling pretty down. What do you do to cheer her up? Go around with a bottle of wine and order a takeout. But what's always with the freaking wine? I mean, it's a nice gesture. Organise a night out with your whole friendship group. nuh -uh. That isn't going to help her. Let a couple of trusted friends know that she's not feeling great and make sure they'll go out with plans to keep her busy. All of the above. None of the above. I do all of the above. Well, you've got to try and make her feel a bit better. Your friend has gone into a serial, serious couple's coma and everyone's annoyed that she never sees anyone anymore. What do you do? Give up on her. If she doesn't have time for you, don't have time for her either. Tell her that you're feeling left out and that she hopes you can start feeling... Or that, and hope she starts making time for you. Or organise an event she can bring her SO along to. That way she won't have an excuse. Bring them both along, why not? You catch your friend lying to you, what do you do? Ignore it as far as you're concerned, you're not friends anymore. Confront her, there must be a reason. Let her come clean her own time. You know that ultimately, one lie isn't going to affect your friendship. Definitely. Uh, you got 75% a good friend. Woo! I'm 75% a good friend. You're a really good friend. You're always there for people and friends when they need you. And you'd expect the same of them back. You're the kind of person who will rely, who, when people rely on when they need cheering up, but also go to when they want to celebrate. Your friendships are really precious. And I hope they are, okay? So I guys, hope they are. that is going to be the end of this episode, or the episode? I'm so used to saying end of this episode, because I just make so many episode videos. That is going to be the end of this video. So, if you did enjoy, please remember to drop a like. We found out today that we are a good friend, and it must be the other people who just don't like my friendship or company. Again, I can't blame them. But, um, yeah, as I said, if you did enjoy the video, please do remember to drop a like on the video. It really helps support the channel. Leave a comment down below what you'd like to see next weekend. If you're new around here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure the notifications are turned on. I've been David. This has been Subscriber Sunday. Hopefully you've all enjoyed. Thank you all for tuning in. Stay safe, stay awesome, stay happy, and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.